Zone at 91.3 presents The B-Side. Dan Gunman. Hey, Dylan. Hi, Dan. Jason, how you doing? I'm great, thank you. Good. What's on the B-Side, pal? Well, it's all, you know, we're coming up on Halloween. Yeah, are you a Halloween guy, by the way? Uh, you know, I like people dressing up. I like scary stuff. I like free candy. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, it hits all the, the marks, but I really, I don't like the pressure of like, what are you going to do? What yeah. are you going to be? I, don't I mean, like you're it. a guy that will dress up as a full yeah. grizzly bear for no other reason yeah. than because you can. I don't really need Halloween as an excuse to dress up or eat candy. So, yeah. But, it, you know, it helps other people express themselves. So I think that's good. It reminded me of a documentary that I think it came out in like 2005 called Midnight Movies uh, that had a longer name. It was a documentary about in like the late 70s in New York these movie theaters just started showing movies like the same movie every night at midnight. So it started with things like uh, Pink Flamingos by um, John Waters, right? right? And then and then there was uh, Eraserhead by David Lynch. Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks coming out soon. David Lynch, yeah. amazing director, r- very excited. That's like that's real life Halloween when you watch Twin Peaks. <laughs> and then uh, also and the Rocky Horror Picture Show made its way in there. And so what they were doing in New York at the time was they'd show it every Saturday at midnight. They'd show their movie, and the same people would show up in whatever state of mind they might have wanted to be in to right. watch these crazy movies. And then it became participatory and interactive. They built community out of it. It was a really cool scene. You don't get that now because movie theaters are expensive to run and and you got to move mo- movies through more quickly. You don't run them for a year and a half. But luckily for us, thanks to Atomic Vaudeville, right now you guys have been talking about it, Rocky Horror Picture Show mm-hmm. at the Metro Theater. They did their, their trial run a couple of nights ago, so they're rolling now up until Halloween. But, you know, dress up and uh, bring some toast and, yep. and other interactive some items to and and, you know, have a good time with that. Like that, that movie, I've never seen it. I've never, seen, never seen it. I've, I've never, never seen, seen the I've seen the movie. I've never seen the movie. 80 times. Yeah, me too. I, I haven't seen the, I've seen the play never times. Mm. So I'm going to I'm gonna go this year. But the idea of that you could interact with that great, and that movie too, groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. Like talk about civil rights and human rights and, and acceptance and letting people explore their sexuality. Mm-hmm. That whole movie was about like, you know, letting your freak flag fly. And uh, and I think that was great, and it kind of brought that into the mainstream. Mainstream with the time warp dance that everybody. What's up with doing. the toast? Can you guys give me some context? Because whenever anybody talks about sure, mainly the Go live ahead. performance of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I just want to uh, before I ask my question about toast, uh, it's legendary now at this point yes. in this town. The Atomic Vaudeville yeah. version. Yeah. Uh, apparently, it's just an incredible show. So you do need to get your tickets because it sells out. Right. Well, so Rocky Horror Show started out as a live musical play and then they made the movie and then it continues to be right. done every year by different theater groups including Atomic Vaudeville. But whatever everybody thing, talks about it it's like make sure you bring your toast. Well, I don't toast know is what only that means. <laughs> toast is only one one part of the bigger picture. There's this tradition with Rocky Horror Show, Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, to do certain things at certain parts of the movie or right. the play. So there's a part where Frankenfurter says a toast like uh, he's toasting at the dinner table with with a drink, right? While everybody throws toast. It's a, just a joke. And, and then so does, when they're getting married, everyone throws rice to pretend like you're in the you're, It's very interactive. Am I right? I don't want yeah. to take over no, your no, side. No, no, absolutely. Here, but, that's, yeah. but was this always a part of the experience of the show, or did it evolve over time? I, think, I, I don't know when it, they started doing it originally, but but it's, it's they've been doing it since the 70s. That's yeah. for sure. I think it's evolved. I don't think it started out, bang, they were doing it. I think it became a thing and then just got more and more. Right. With the movie running every week in New York, too, it allowed people to start you know building their little cult. To yeah. go along with it, right? So a sense of community, you're inside on the joke. Uh, you showed up. Imagine that, right? You're in like New York in like 77 or whatever year it is. And you show up with a new gag at the Rocky Horror Picture Show at a Saturday midnight showing. Yeah, you're, right. you're pretty damn cool. Yeah, well, you kidding. forever get to say, I was the one who came up with rice. That's right. I yeah. came up with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and apparently they're selling even kits. You can buy them online and at the box office, you can buy a kit of props. So that you have them for the show, oh, where cool. you can bring them in. So if you don't, if you're not in on the inside track and you don't have all the stuff yourself, you can pick yeah. it up. So I'll be the one busy like going through the prop box at the wrong time. Like what? <laughs> where, where, where's the toast? Or where's just, the rice? Just so, randomly yelling toast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's going on. People should definitely check that out. It just started running, so there's lots of time. And also around town, tours in Victoria. You know, they like to really embrace Halloween. So they've got, like, benches with bat wings on them. We saw that, that down at the causeway the other morning when we were giving away the Civic. It was really cool. Yeah, so Russell Papp, the guy who built the Phillips Gypsy Wagon, the guy who built the space bus for us, um, he's building an exhibit for us at the airport. He's the one that they they got to build all this stuff around cool. town. So there's, like, bat cyclones and, and different things so people can check that out. So, you know what? Put on a costume. Eat some candy. Have a good time. I love it. Dan Gunn, if people want more information... Always check the B-side.com. Thanks, pal. Thanks, Dan.